Hi, I'm Dr. Kim Logan Nolan. And I'm Arthur Nolan. Okay, Arthur, you know, being <laughs> married and working together, it takes a lot of energy. Yes. Does it take a lot of energy to be married to me? Oh, Kim. Why you, you say, know, oh, Kim? I don't have enough energy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like things moving. I like to keep things going yeah, and being motivated. Absolutely. I think that's, you know, a wife's job to keep her husband going. Well, I mean, who gave you that job? Uh, Jesus, <laughs> in the name. The Lord said, submit thyself unto thy husband. Oh, no, Kim. Don't no. you think I submit? Do I submit? <sighs> You taking too long to answer Let's that question. Let's move on. From that Let's move on. Yeah, yeah. No, I want to answer. Do you think I'm a submissive wife? No. Oh, really? No. It's, uh, I mean, am I difficult? Um, you can be. You know, mm. but you know, you, once again, I have to re relay back, Kim, how fortunate you are you, with the type of person I am. Okay. And, and with my personality, mm. I'm able to uh, adjust to you uh -huh. as well as get you to adjust to me. So being equally yoked. Absolutely. So that's important, being equally yoked. Willing to be equally yoked. I'm you know? willing. Hey, because being equally yoked, I'm under the impression that you, you can think that you're equally yoked, but still you have to work on it. Uh, it's, it's a daily process. It's a constant. It's a work in, I'm a work in progress. Yes, and I am too, Kim. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad you said that. Absolutely. Well, that takes us to our interview, mm -hmm. you know, with Tina and Marvin, building a marriage that's going to be able to stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of ups and downs in this marriage, and we've been counseling them for a long time. Yeah. But they are in it to win it. And I'm excited about that. So marriage takes work. It takes being a submissive partner. Submissive, that means the Bible says, husband, submit thyself unto the Lord. Mm. Amen. Yeah. And Arthur, you do. You really mm. do. I think at times I have to say that I give you a hard time because I'm not stubborn. It's just sometimes I just like Kim, things my way. Kim, what? That's not say that you're not stubborn. I mean, we, we're talking about being honest, right? Right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, we don't want to go back to the lying statement. <laughs> well, listen, I'm not, I'm, I want to submit. But listen, we're going to go to the interview with Tina and Marvin and the importance of how to stand the test of time, staying married. Marvin and Tina Kyle, thank you for being on Making It Work. Let me ask you, how long have you been married? 17 years. 17 years. Mm. Where did you meet? Well, um, <laughs> I was in high school. I was in the 10th grade. And my best friend had told me that she knew a guy that was really nice for me to meet. Mm. And um, I met him after school, yes. And he was older than I was. Mm. And I've been knowing my husband since I was 15 years old. Wow. He's a little older than I am, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, just a little. <laughs> so we've been, been knowing each other for a long time. Okay. okay. And you have how many children? We have three children. And what are their ages? Miranda is 12. I mean, I'm sorry. Miranda's 16, <laughs> Marvin is 12, and Tolan is 2. Oh, yes. okay. So let me ask you, what are some of the challenges um, you face in your marriage, and how do you make it work? Well, some of the challenges that we face in our marriage are uh, communication. Okay. It's really hard when um, one partner, being, being a female who communicates about everything, um, try to communicate with someone who has a closed mind about communicating. Um, my husband, he's very uh, quiet when it comes down to talking about issues that need to be discussed and um, so it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's really a hard um, way of trying to make it work and come together when we have uh, issues that need to be discussed mm -hmm. or just the small things because sometimes I forget mm -hmm. and he's more, uh, rem he remember more than I do mm -hmm. but when it, when it comes to um, um, dealing with issues in our marriage um, that's where we, we hit the head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Marvin, when she um, discusses issues with you, mm -hmm. is that like a red flag for you or something? I mean, to the point where you don't want to share your feelings? Or what? I don't think it's a red flag. I just think as far as a man, men, men normally are 
keep stuff bottled up. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know if we just wired that way. But a lot of times men just keep things in. We don't want to like just release everything. We want to just get everything in like little, little increments. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we did do more like that, we'll have better relationships out there. So if you, if you if communicate you communicate more, more and yeah. understand that um, communication goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you don't communicate, that's when you can get things uh, misconstrued, uh, mm -hmm. changed up where people think you're saying one thing you're not. And if you go ahead and communicate with each other and everyone on the same level or on the same page, then you're good. Is that something that, that you want to do? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, why is it that your wife said that, that that's a problem in the relationship? It's a, it's a problem, but that's something you have to work out. And it's not just with me and her, it's with myself. And okay. I'm going to have to be able to open up more. Okay. Open up more, be able to discuss more things. You know, some things, you know, you probably don't want to discuss. Mm -hmm. But you just got to just let, let, let go and just, just mm -hmm. talk about them. And that's the only way. Were you raised with both your parents? At one? No. Okay. I uh, started off with both parents, and then it was just one of my mother. Mm -hmm. So I think when you don't have that man figure in the house, mm -hmm. sometimes you might go like quiet. That was she said, I'm more quiet than anything. I don't talk a lot. Um, I think that has something to do with it. But you know, with your mom, uh, she really can't be the father. Mm -hmm. She can want to be the father and do things to try to replace that role, mm -hmm. um, but she can't. Mm -hmm. So you said that by the dad not being in the mm -hmm. home left a void right. with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how do you overcome that? I don't know. Do you really overcome it? I think uh, you can um, sustain. Well, if it's stagnating. Right, it's stagnating, but mm -hmm. I think you you can eventually get over it. I mm -hmm. mean, because you know you have to, you have your own kids and things, and you have to learn from that because your kids look into you to be the father, mm -hmm. you know, to you know have fun with them, do everything that your dad didn't do. Mm -hmm. So you have to change the way you think, mm -hmm. and so I think it is a possibility. Of, well, you can. Um, be that man that you want to be as far as the father of your kids and get past that. Mm -hmm. So, do you, do you trust sharing information with your wife? Yeah, I trust sharing information. Yeah. It's just sometimes, like I said, just be difficult because I guess I, I wouldn't say we bullheaded as far as men, but we, we, we just like just by ourselves. I mean, we could talk to another guy, it won't be no problem. Mm -hmm. We'll let everything go mm -hmm. in front of another male, but. When it's talking to your significant other, it's a little different, but I think we just got to understand that they're there to help us, mm -hmm. and they're not there to hurt us, and we got to understand that we got to just you know, let go. Do you think you both equally yoked? You know, the Bible speaks about be thou not unequally yoked, and do you feel that you're equally yoked as far as your personalities, your likes, your dislikes, your ch you know, just overall? Do you feel that you're equally yoked, Tina? I think we're equally yoked in terms of our childhood. Mm -hmm. um, we both come from um, childhoods that were very challenging. Um, and with that said, I thought we were coming together with a goal of wanting to create that family environment for our future and for our children. Mm -hmm. So in speaking in that term, I think we're equally yoked. Mm -hmm. um, but there are times that I think that we're unequally yoked um, spiritually mm -hmm. because, um, like I say, I'm more verbally and my prayer life is a little more um, uh, more aggressive, mm -hmm. I would say, than I would say, I don't know how often he prays. I can't speak for him, but I speak for me. More aggressive with my prayer life with God. And I think that if we would just come together a little more and be, um, one uh, on one accord spiritually, I think that would be would be a challenge that we could overcome. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the challenges that we face in our marriage is um, not being able to come together and be on one accord in terms of prayer and seeking God. Well, what's what's blocking mm -hmm. you from being on one accord? Mm -hmm. You know, being the husband, being the spiritual leader, is it the work schedule? I mean, what is it that keeps you all from praying together, reading the word mm -hmm. together, regular attendance in church, tithing together? What is the block? I oh. think it's mm -hmm. I think it's uh 
um, a work of the enemy who's tried to tear the, the family, the foundation mm -hmm. of our family down. Okay. And we allow it to happen. We have to make decisions um, in terms of what are we going to do today? Are we going to pray today? Are we going to fellowship today in terms of reading our Bible and praying mm -hmm. together? We have to make that decision, but the enemy set up blocks in our family where we're too tired or we're too busy mm -hmm. or um, the kids are pulling at us. Mm -hmm. There's so much going on every day when you go to work, you got homework, you got, okay, you got to take a bath, you got to do this, you got to do that. He come home, he's tired. And by the time, at the end of the day, we're tired. Mm -hmm. And we don't have that time to sit down and say, okay, let's open up our, our Bible and, and read and let's have prayer. Uh, sometimes it, it's challenging. But um, what I find mm -hmm. that works for me okay. is morning prayer. Mm -hmm. I have to get up early and that's my time that I mm -hmm. have with God. And I read my Bible and I pray. Mm -hmm. um, everybody don't do that. That's not for everybody, but mm -hmm. that works for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as a family, um, you know, the enemy is after tearing up the family. Mm -hmm. He's enemy after de to destroy the family. So as a whole, we have to make that decision um, to to come over to get over that hump. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Marv, um, hearing what Tina is, is saying, mm -hmm. you know, it, it I would think that this has come up within your marriage mm -hmm. the, about prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, what are some of the things that you think uh, would uh, change the situation and allow you to provide that aspect? within your family structure? I think um, you have to you have to make time. Mm -hmm. You have to make time some kind of way. We make time for everything else. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, uh, you want to go to the movies, want to watch sports, you know, because I'm like into sports. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you make time for everything else, but you got to make time for God. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue. I think um, we got to put some of the things behind us, put it to the side, if you have the T-Void, T-Void, record mm. it, watch it later. But I think that's the main thing. You have to put things aside and put God first. When you put God second, that's where the enemy comes in, destroys your family, mm. and does everything. Mm. So I think that's what I have to do, and I'm the head of the household. It's my job mm. to come in, start praying with the family, mm. uh, pull the Bibles out, start you know, start g going in depth into the Bible. Mm -hmm. And and if I don't do it, who will? Mm -hmm. And I cannot wait for her to do it. Mm -hmm. I have to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, the kids look up to their dad first, it's the father and then the wife. So it's up to me mm -hmm. to do it. I like um, something that you all have in place. Wednesdays are your days off. Mm -hmm. And you get the children after school and you take them out to eat. You take them to some type of activity and you really spend that quality time. I know one of our exercises was that you were to pick up uh, the baby, baby Tolan, mm -hmm. and you were to go home and cook. And I think mm -hmm. that night you all had pizza mm -hmm. and you just enjoyed you know, watching a television program. But how did that feel? Just letting her go to work, come home, do nothing. Mm -hmm. All right, because she called me. She said, I'm not supposed to do anything. I said, nothing, <laughs> you know, and you took care of everything. Mm -hmm. And she said you did. How did that make you feel? It felt good. It felt good. And I know it's my day off, and I know she had a hard day's work. So sometimes it's good for her to come home and just relax mm -hmm. and unwind, because I know being at work, is a it can be stressful. Mm -hmm. It can be stressful. You don't know who you're dealing with all day, you're on your feet or not. It's, uh, it can be physically, it can be mentally. So mm -hmm. sometimes good just to come home, you know, and be able to relax mm -hmm. and enjoy the family instead of worrying about everything to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the things that, that I'm, I'm interested in is finding out if you have a plan for your marriage. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, and, and what is that plan? What's the plan for a successful relationship between the both of you? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's, the so key. That, I, I, that's a good question. That's a good question. You know, I mean, I, I haven't no, known that. Then, yeah. That was good. You know, yeah. no, I got to no, borrow that one. I, but, I don't but, want you to. <laughs> I was going to say, basically, a plan is basically you should make time for each other, mm -hmm. which date night, 
have a date on a certain day, have a family night. Mm -hmm. And I think always keep the family as far as when it's dinner time or anything, bring everybody to the table. Mm -hmm. It's so easy for someone to be upstairs on a phone or on a computer mm -hmm. and everybody is everywhere to bring everybody together in one place, mm -hmm. you know, and enjoy each other's company. Mm -hmm. That's the start of a plan, starting mm -hmm. to have uh, that unity as far as a family, mm -hmm. um, and as far as just being in the kitchen cooking together, you know, mm -hmm. on a Sunday mm -hmm. or something. Um, that's something that is good for the family. Mm -hmm. um, even, even bring the kids in. If you're making desserts or something, bring them in, mm -hmm. have them help. You know, I think they'll love that, mm -hmm. you know. And besides just trying to always go somewhere, because mm -hmm. sometimes your finances can't do that. So you always can do stuff together at the home. So mm -hmm. I think that's a start of a plan that can bring mm -hmm. everybody together. Mm -hmm. I remember one night um, Tina had accidentally uh, taken the keys to both cars. Mm -hmm. And so you were home with the children. You told me it turned out to be just fine. Mm -hmm. um, in your interaction with the children, um, when they see you and mom together, mm -hmm. you know, what do they see? What do they see between the two of you? Well, they just love us being together. I mean, when they see us together, I mean, that's, that's everything. They don't, I, they don't want us to be apart. And I think when they see us together, that, that gives them a calm or a sense of security. Oh, yeah. That the parents are going to be together. There's no such thing as uh, leaving each other. They're going to always be there for us. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's a good thing. And like you said, when I took them took them over and had uh, on Wednesdays and have fun with them, they love daddy time. They love, they daddy, love time. daddy time. They mm -hmm. love daddy time. They can do it every day. <laughs> if I could, they'd be like, you don't need to go to work. You don't need to go to work. Stay home. Uh -huh. You know, play with us or just talk to us or do interact with them and they love that. I saw it, I really did when you came here and um, they were very, very attached to you. They, mm -hmm. And they love mother, oh mm -hmm. definitely. But usually it's, 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 you know, you don't see the father. Mm -hmm. And I do commend you anytime I ask you to come in and when you do come and the children and what we've been working on. Mm -hmm. How important is it for you to have the children to have a voice in your relationship? Do they have a voice? I think they should have a voice. I think mm -hmm. they do have a voice. Mm -hmm. And I think their voice is um, very important because they see things that we don't see. You know, when you're in a relationship, you don't see the, you know, the challenges that you go through. You All you know is you're in it. And sometimes they may point out, um, you know, things that, um, that I may have said that was a little harsh or something that yeah. I could have done a little better. Oh, yeah. And it, it, it helps. Um, but uh, they have um, played a big role in the survival of our marriage mm -hmm. because of their voice. Mm -hmm. um, they are um, very, um, they have a very strong feeling about keeping us together and not divide us, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they do everything that they can, you know, if it's to stay out of our way and, and let us be together alone. They don't overstep their boundaries in terms of being in our room too long. Now yeah. I noticed that. Okay. Um, but their voice, yes, is very important. Um, even though their children, like back in the day, it was your mm -hmm. children should be seen and not heard. Not heard. And I don't think that that's a way that you would raise a healthy child because their voice is important and they need to learn to express themselves, mm -hmm. especially in, um, you know, when it, it comes to their feelings and their emotion and, and being in a relationship with their parents. I invited your children to come to counseling and I wanted to meet them and talk with them to hear their voice. Mm -hmm. And truly, they do have a voice and they are very open about their feelings, uh, what they want and expect in their home, and what they want from you as parents. And I commend you for that, because some parents wouldn't have brought their children in. And, and, and counseling, this doesn't mean you're sick or you're, or you're, you're messed up or you're, insa you're insane. It means that you're just asking for some direction, some help, because all we can give you, and my husband taught me this a long time ago, is suggestions. It's up to you to implement those suggestions. Where do you all go from here to continue to making it work? What do you do? What are you going to do? I'm going to continue to pray mm. and ask God to give me the strength 
um, to be the mother that I need to be for my children and to give me patience when it comes to being a wife mm -hmm. because there are times where I want to give up and mm -hmm. I want to quit and I want to run mm -hmm. but I know that um, that's not the answer. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be more of a um, caring person yes. um, in terms of towards my husband. There are times when I'm tired and I don't feel like you know mm -hmm. giving myself um, but those are the times that I need to sacrifice and be more sensitive mm -hmm. to his need yes. um, and just be more open um, you know, be open-minded to, to mm -hmm. what could be the possibilities of making it work. All right, go ahead. And Marvin? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, have, we have about a minute left. Come okay, on, tell um, us what you're thinking. Uh, it, it's funny because I was just thinking of something, what she said before, because she, she had brought up to me about um, men and intimacy. And we sometimes run from it. And it don't always mean physical, it can be mentally. And I think with that, as long as you're intimate physically and mentally with your wife, anything's possible. Anything, you can go everywhere with that. And I think we just got to dig deep down because, like I said, we so shelter, we keep everything closed in. If we release ourselves to each other, I think our marriage can flourish. Mm -hmm. All right. I think one of the things that I would like to make a comment on is mm -hmm. the fact that I see a lot of sincerity mm -hmm. in how you are expressing your feelings about your, your relationship. And I just encourage you to, uh, to focus on the prayer aspect. Definitely. I think that's going to be very significant. So uh, that's my encouragement. And you just hang yeah. in there, you yes. know, and don't quit. And you yeah. can't quit. And yeah. I have to say, when the moment you came into counseling and to now, the effort that you're giving, you are making it work and you're allowing God to make a change. I'm proud of you both. Yeah. Let's keep going forward. Can we do that? Yes. yes. All right. Thank you for being with yeah. us. God bless you both. God bless. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Tina. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Arthur, how do we stand the test of time? You know, there are a lot of marriages really going through, people holding on by a thread to stay married. How do we do this? How? You have to take a risk mm. to give up the old ways and mm. do whatever is required for you to keep your marriage together. I see. You know, sometimes one person is a little bit more sensitive than the other person. Okay. And sometimes that sensitive person has to say, okay, yes, I was wrong. Yes. Yes, that I felt that I was disrespected, mm -hmm. but I'm going to work on my relationship anyway. I'm going to try to resolve our issues. So that's like me. I'll be the first one to say I'm sorry. Kim. I apologize. I get Arthur. Okay, I, I just got to tell you what happened today. I was cooking breakfast and I was cooking some eggs in the microwave and I was going into a discussion with Arthur. We're going to keep it real here on making it work. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for an apology from him and he didn't, he said I didn't hear it. I took the plate of the eggs out and it exploded in my face. Yes. And the eggs was in my eyes. Mm -hmm. It was everywhere. And he ran to help me and my face was swollen, my neck, but still God bless us to do the taping to do this today. But again, recognizing that I was willing to submit. But I think if I had to just let it go and I focused in on what was going on with the microwave, I don't think that would have happened to me so today. So you said two things right there that maybe the same thing is occurring with the cows. Mm -hmm. You know, they had a discussion. Yes. The cows constantly were having disagreements. Correct. You know, and yet your frustration mm -hmm. and your anger mm -hmm. made you take those eggs out I the wasn't microwave. Watching. I wasn't watching. Without paying attention. Right. You right. know. And so, how many times that has that happened in other areas? You have not paid attention. I would tell you to do something, and you would not pay attention. So I'm telling you, you know.
know, once again, if you don't follow my lead, you may have experiences like that. Oh my goodness, you know, again, that's what it means to just be humble. Humble thyself unto the Lord, I tell you. But I, I thank you, I thank God that you were there to help me Absolutely. through that difficulty. But with the I got over my, my frustration, my anger, and I ran to your rescue. You did. Just like a good husband would. Okay, but look at the fact that the Kyles, how they wanted to give up, how they wanted to not be there to help each other like you were there to help me today. So, you know, when you say they wanted to give up, let's look at that because did they really want to give up? Because if they really wanted to give up, they would not come. Mm -hmm. to seek some type of intervention, mm -hmm. you know, and they had a desire to do that. And they've been with us for a while now. Oh, definitely. You know, so they're fighting for their relationship. But once again, they understand that there are some barriers within their relationship. That's it. There's some barriers. That they have to get over. And it's usually family origin issues. Mm -hmm. Her issues is dealing with how she was raised as a child and his is the same way. He has expectations okay. of how she's supposed to act. All right, so give us some solutions. What do we need to do? First of all, you said we have I, to. I told you earlier, one of the things is a person has to take a risk. Take a risk. To make a change. Okay, you have but to take a risk to make a, a change. A paradigm shift. Uh, oh, I like that paradigm shift. Yeah. So if I'm on one freeway and it's shut down, I'm not going to sit there if I see a way or exit. I'm taking that exit and getting off that freeway so I won't stay stagnated. You, you're going into a different direction. I'm going into a new direction. You expect a different solution. All right, mm -hmm. now what else? And the second thing is, is that you understand that it may not work the first time, mm -hmm. but I don't stop trying. Did you hear that? You don't stop trying, even though you don't see an instant release. A lot of people look for instant gratification. Absolutely. It's not gonna happen. The behavior didn't occur overnight, and it's not going to change overnight. Mm -hmm. So you, get, you have to be patient. I think patience is a great, you know, avenue to use. You you know, patience an asset is you excellent. Okay. You know, and beyond all of the solutions, the yes. primary thing is that they had to come together through prayer. 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 I'm telling you, without <laughs> the power of prayer and the Holy Spirit, you just can't do anything. Yeah. You need God to lead you. Arthur, I just want to say God is leading. He's moving. Yes. And remember, with God, I can do all things through Christ. God bless you. I'm Dr. Kim Logan Nolan. I'm Arthur Nolan. God bless.